filmmaker Luis Buñuel said, I would give my life for a man who is looking for the truth, but I would gladly kill a man who thinks he has found the truth. Fear has a great deal to do with the attraction to sideshows. When I was a kid, I wasn't afraid of them though. I was drawn to them and kind of pulled like a magnet to the sideshow and to all the things around the sideshows. There was an attraction of being different, of being separate and maybe alienated and isolated that I found in common with a lot of the people who were connected to the sideshow, especially with the freaks. And being drawn to the more bizarre aspects, such as uh, shrunken heads in jars, uh, skeletons. On this orbit that I've kind of been on all these years, I've met many, many unusual people. And it, it has only recently occurred to me that uh, uh, this is actually a journey, you know. Uh, my work is sort of my life. My, my, my living is my work. The road and the highways, uh, I hope to be able to find that moment of real clarity, of real, uh, it's, it, it's like a, a different, it's like a plateau you suddenly find yourself upon. And at that time, uh, you're whole, you're 100% whole, you're genuine. While I was doing my searches and wanderings, uh, it, it came to me that uh, I'm gonna do a book and the title of it is uh, called Kill Me on This Lonely Road. And it doesn't necessarily mean being murdered on the road itself, but uh, what it really has to do with is finding that plateau where you kind of come together with what you're doing and uh, living your life in a sense alone with that because you have to pretty much isolate yourself into that particular frame to do that particular thing to make your vision and your voice as clear as possible and uh, dying at doing that no matter how long it takes you to die. I've often questioned what it was in me that was drawn to the desert, drawn to that sense of isolation and I had to really search into myself as to what it was, what was the attraction towards this, towards this, this sense of desolation. And uh, I find that there is in me the very, very strong sense of desolation. So the sense of desolation has hounded me and uh, kept me on the run, so to speak. Now the relationships, the women I've been drawn to and attracted to, they all seem to have uh, uh, been these very intense relationships for brief, uh, briefed periods of time. They burn fast and hot. I had this with uh, Gene Seberg. That was one of the relationships I've had that I feel uh, uh, I look back at with a kind of uh, feeling of never having completed something. Gene and other people that I've been involved with I, I, I can maybe say they were like these uh, uh, windswept relationships and blowing in and blowing out. And what's left is this idea or the feeling of desolation. I think the desolation is, is good and the pain is good. I think it seasons one. I think you have to go beyond the simple comforts you have to go beyond. Dennis Hopper and I used to have quite a good time together. Dennis uh, had a lot of trouble with it. He's cleaned up his act pretty good now. So we didn't drink to chase away the evil spirits. We drank to embrace the evil spirits. The question of why so many artists and writers are alcoholics or addicted to drugs. Well, I don't personally think that's really a very relevant uh, point of view. 
The only thing that really matters about an artist is the work and what he's done, what he's created, what he's accomplished. No matter how he got there. The idea of being saved was always a mystery to me as a kid. I used to have a lot of nightmares all the time. And it was during these times that uh, some of these dreams I'd have would, would be of great blocks of transparent blocks like plastic and they would be filled with human bodies uh, completely compressed within these great glass blocks. The faces would somehow be smeared against the sides from the inside. And I had an idea that Jesus would save me. It's strange that I, I never occupied my thinking with what I was to be saved from. So I continued to live my life thinking that there's something out there, a sense of salvation. We pursue ideas of salvation because we're afraid to die. We're afraid to die because we're afraid of the dark. We're afraid of the dark because it represents the unknown territory once again. So, when so many people try to break free and to go into that unexplored territory, they're criticized heavily. Some make it and some don't. It's called a death trip by many people. <laughs>